My name is Alessia, and I will be hosting today's online event. At the first, this program was planned to be carried out in Sodom prison, but due to COVID-19 situation, we decided to move it into online space for everybody's safety. And we're glad that you found time to join us today. Uh, some of you, have, of you have already been in Sodom prison and some, some of you haven't been there before. Unfortunately, due to the corona circumstances, we can't visit Sodom prison and mm -hmm. have a tour there. So uh, I want to suggest you to immerse into the hi online historical tour to the Sodom prison. Uh, so I will show you the video. Um, I will show you the video. Uh, this video took the first place, the first place last year on the Sodom Moon Prison event video contest. Good morning, guys. Today we are at Sodom Moon Prison History Hall. This prison is a living proof of the horrendous history and sufferings that Koreans had to go through during the Japanese colonial era. The Japanese colonial era started from 1910 to 1945 and has a significant meaning when describing the history of Korea. The whole country was brutally oppressed, lots of historic materials were stolen and destroyed, the culture as well as the common people were totally annihilated. Women were forced to work as sex slaves for the Japanese army. Men were drafted to Japan to provide labor in inhuman working environments many of whom were starved to death while working without food or rest. The Japanese government forced Koreans to change their original Korean names to Japanese names. Not only that, the Japanese government also got rid of any Korean textbooks from schools and any student who spoke a single word in Korean was instantly punished. The whole oppression was to completely annihilate the culture, spirit and history of the country. A number of brave Koreans who fought for independence of their country were imprisoned right here in this prison and were tortured to death for their movement. This prison could only hold up to 500 prisoners. However, 3,500 prisoners were locked inside this prison during the anti-Japanese protest in 1919. This, of course, led to the usual spread of contagious diseases caused by overcrowding and lack of proper sanitation with shortage of food, torture and regular beatings that led to many prisoners dying in custody without any legitimate reasons. Unfortunately, there was no heating provided in the harsh Korean winter, so many of the prisoners also died because of hypothermia. According to Lonely Planet, around 40,000 freedom fighters passed through the entrance gate, and at least 400 of them died or were killed inside this prison, including Ru Guan San, an 18-year-old high school student who was tortured to death in 1920. This area is a memorial hall to all the Korean freedom fighters who were imprisoned here. As you can see, there are hundreds of photos of Korean freedom fighters who were imprisoned here. And some of these Korean freedom fighters look disturbingly young. This former prison stands as a symbol of bravery of the Korean freedom fighters and as a grim reminder of the cruelties committed by the colonial Japanese forces during its occupation of Korea. So, 
Sodomo prison has a great meaning for Korean people, and this place reminds them of the brutal colonial rule of Japan, and it's one of the most, and about one of the most sad part of Korean history. So today, one of the Korean participants prepared for you a presentation about Sodomo prison and the, some <clears throat> and about the time of uh, uh, of Japan of Japan rule in Korea. Okay, so I'll be sharing the recent history of Korea and a place named Sodevon Prison. So the recent history, we say, it starts from 1863. And from 1863 to 1910, the Jerusalem crisis. This was a time where Korea was in tragedy inside and out. Um, inside, the corrupted dominant classes suffered the public, and from outside, the world powers kept on trying to deceive Korea. So at 1863, there was a person named Hung Sam Dae Gun who was in charge of Korea, as you can see the photo on your left. And he tried to reform the defeated mind. And the representative of the corrupted dominant class would be Emperor Gojong and his wife, Queen Mi. So 1876 is like the start of Japan's plunder. Japan and Korea had a treaty and out of all these contract clauses, the worst was Japan's usage of armed forces to open up the ports, especially in Busan and other places. And in 1882, the Imo military revolt happened. This was because the outmoded soldiers were kind of sick of being differentiated with the modern soldiers. So they started the revolt, but due to Queen Mi, as you, can, as you saw the photo, she bankrupted Korea, so there was no power for the Korea to actually stop this revolt. So you had to ask China for their help to stop this. And in the, for the cost of receiving China's um, help was an unfair treaty. And by this time, China started to control Korea's rejoin. And in 1894, another revolt happens, but this was due to the public. The public was outrageous by the dominant power's continuous exploit. And the powerless court again asked China to ask China for their help. With the meeting, uh, with the title of, I'm going to control your country. So 1895, the Sino-Japanese war happens and Japan won, uh, Japan wins. And from this time, um, the whole world started to restrain Japan. So Queen Min also started to check on Japan and stands on Russia's side. And disappointed of Queen Min's attitude, Japan sends assassins to kill her. So Emperor Gojong was terrified that her wife was actually killed by Japanese people. So he deserts his palace and hides inside the Russia's legislation. And it's kind of embarrassing that the Korean king had to desert his palace and go to another place go to another country's place. So by this chance, Russia takes over Korea and tries to control it. Again in 1905, Japan and Korea make another treaty and this time Japan takes Korea's diplomacy. And in 1907, due to Gojong's mission, a special envoy was sent to Hague Peace Conference so that they can proclaim that the Japan and Korea's treaty is invalid. However, Japan finds out before the special envoy goes into the conference. And due to this problem, um, Japan abdicates Hen Gojong. So Japan's greed of Korea becomes certain now and patriotic soldiers started to volunteer and without any proper weapons, they stand against Japan's imperialism. However, the tragedy does not stop here. And from 1910 to 1945, we call this period the Korean's tear. So the first independence war fighter is called An jung -gun. He killed Ito Hirabumi with three gunshots at the Harbin station. Ito Hirabumi was Korea's renowned enemy as he was the prime mover of Korea's colonization. Another important activity the people done was March 1st, we call this Manse movement. So every Korean came out from their houses and shouted out hooray for the independence of Korea to resist in Japan. And after this day, an actual provisional government of the Republic of Korea was made 
to antagonize as an organization. Instead of um, other than An Jung-gun, we have another famous um, independence fighters who are called Yi Bong Chang and Yun Bong Gil. So what Yi Bong Chang did was um, Tokyo Japanese emperor was riding the carriage with a very firm, strict security. And out of nowhere from the crowd, Yi Bong Chang threw a bomb to the carriage. Unfortunately, the bomb hits the back of the carriage and the emperor was safe. The Yi Bong Chang gets caught at that spot and dies. And for Yun Bong Gil, there was a Japanese military celebration at the park and Yun Bong Gil splits through the soldier cordon and throws a bomb to the platform which kills many Japanese, including the Supreme Commander. He also gets caught at the spot and goes to Southern prison and dies there. So this was a, this was a very famous um, incident. So after Japan has colonized Korea, all the Korean athletes had to wear Japanese clothes and attend to the Olympic. The person, as you can see in the middle, won the ma marathon. However, he was embarrassed that his suit had a flag of Japan, so he covers it up with this plaque. And the Korean presses actually erases this Japan flag that was sued on top of the cloth, and Japan actually, um, actually um, closed all the media. And finally, after all the sacrifices done, August 15th, Korea meets independence. Japan lost the Second World War and automatically Korea got liberated. However, there were independent fighters who felt inconvenient as independence weren't accomplished by Koreans' pure power, but by the other forces. Yet that day, for sure, was the most beautiful day. Okay. After we continue, I would like to introduce the Demon Prison. So as you can see in the video, this was the first prison that had been established with the modern facilities, but it's also famous for the torture. So many fighters were locked down at the basement collar and had to, which was just the size of a square foot. So if Germany had Auschwitz, Korea has the Demon Prison. As you can see, some people, um, the independent fighters, were locked inside this cage, which had, which was surrounded by spikes. And the Japanese um, armies would roll this box, so all the spikes would go through their body. So from now, Japan, um, Korea had to fight for sovereignty, and from now on, Korea fights for democracy. So after Japan is got rid, Japan was rid of Korea. Um, Korea starts the first election, which uh, for the member of National Assembly, the turnout was 99.5% and a total of 200 members were elected. And the Korean War happens. This was due to the sudden North invasion of South and the Korean War was embarked. So later on, UN and China army were involved in this war, which led up to an international war. Until, the, until now, the war hasn't concluded and only left big scars in both countries. The April 19th revolution is a start for the struggle of democracy. So President Yi Sing Man seized power for 12 years and his illegal election came to the surface and public started a very severe protest where many students were tortured and killed. The May 18th democratic movement only happened in Jeolladu province. Citizens wanted a democratic move government and um, started, started this protest. Soldiers who were in dominance at that moment proclaimed martial law and suppressed the mass. Lots of people died and unfortunately this democratic movement failed. However, due to this movement, this leads to our next remonstrance, which is the June democracy movement. A lot of students were found with bombs stuck inside their head and people just killed outside and thrown into the gardens and anywhere. So, the number gradually began to grow, grow larger, and after intense movement, movements, finally the dictator who covered his status with the word um, president promised election. So after all those tragic movements, Korea is free and was ready for a happy ending. So the, for the first time, Korea goes to the semi-final on the 2002 World Cup. Everyone, even at the funeral or the wedding, were standing in front of the TV cheering for Korea. 
And after all these fights our ancestors have done to achieve democracy, at 2017, it casted a glue. Ms. Park, who was accused of bribery and corruption, um, public held a candlelight vigil for her impeachment. So holding this whole history behind, Korea is improving time over time to be a better country. And I hope by this lecture, you guys could understand a little bit of Korea and increase your affection. Thank you. So unfortunately, not only Korea, but also other countries have similar tragic and painful history. And today, mm -hmm. presentation about their country's history. And now, uh, Kimia, Kimia Shi will yes. tell us about Iran history. Okay, today I'm gonna just talk about a prison that now is going to be, now is a museum. <laughs> it was in the, in, in the past it was a prison and now we call it Ebrat Museum. It was called the Tohit prison in the past. And we have the same historical past with Korea. At the first, I want to show you where it was located. Isn't it beautiful? It's a very historical gate. We call it Sardar Bogemeli, which is located in the uh, capital uh, of Iran, Tehran. It's very beautiful now and it's very neat, uh, but in the past it was full of the offices uh, belonged to the government. And there were a little prison called the Tohit prison, which you can see in the a little picture in the uh, in the left, uh, I call it the Ebrat Museum. And it was the prison of women at the first because there were just one modern prison at that time in Iran, uh, that was this, and it belonged to the women prison. But after the amount of protesters, uh, 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 amount of protesters increased, uh, because the king of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah, wasn't people or the activities he did uh, or the things that he did in the past. Uh, people just wanted to protest and this was the main prison that they bring the protesters and they tortured them and to get their confessions. And this prison was 40 years active and during this day, these years over 100 uh, 1000 uh, prisoners were in and out of this prison. And I want to introduce you more about what happened in the prison. As you can see, there are some Hall of Fames that shows the picture of the prisoners and there are plenty of them. And some of them uh, were women's and some of them were men's and they were taken in the same place. Uh, they would treat the prisoners very bad and they would just did everything they can. There were a lot of methods that they do uh, in, for the prisoners. Uh, one of them that is very bad is that they didn't let the prisoners sleep for over, over two weeks and they just start to feel unhealthy and start to feel uh, guilty and they just wanted to confess everything so they can be out of the prison. Uh, but and one of the uh, next things that even people which were not who were not in the prison did understand and did hear was the screaming and the groaning of the prisoners. Uh, some of the nights they just played uh, some very loud groaning voices of the previous prisoners or even the fake <laughs> prisoners to make the other prisoners feel guilty, feel unhealthy and didn't want to let them sleep. And it, the groaning was even heard from the streets. Even the offices, the governmental offices that were near the prison always had trouble working uh, because of the voices that were uh, heard every time. As you can see, there are some uh, figure waxes, uh, the wa wax figures of what they did to the prisoners. I choose the best of them because I, you know, they were some bloody and very bad things about it. And the circular museum, the circular prison is now a museum. Uh, and I just want to show you now some of the famous prisoners for Tohit prison or Ebrad museum. The first one is uh, one of the most 
nicest and one of the most fantastic one because he was in that prison for 32 years. And as you can see the picture of him, he was so young when he entered the prison and when he left, he was a total old man. He holds the record for a political opponent, which was in, the, in that prison for over years. And he wrote a book about his mental uh, health and his, the physical tortures that he get through these years. And after that, we have Ali Shariati, which was the mentor of Iran. He just speech, he gave speeches at the universities, at the mosques about the revolution of Iran, the revolution that people have to be a part of it. And he motivated a lot of people from a higher class of Iran, which were the educated class of Iran, to be a part of Iran revolution. And after that, we have Ali Rajai, which was a mathematic teacher. And he was in that prison too, because he just did some activities which were anti-king or anti-shah of Iran. Uh, I just wanted to show you that this prison doesn't belong to some kind of a special class of Iran. There were teachers, they were university students, they were just uh, people from military service all in uh, all in the, the prison and they were tortured very bad. And I wanted to show you now how the prison is nowadays. You know, as I show you, there were a lot of wax figures in every cell of the prison and they just want to show the people from the past or from here, like me, the young ones, to tell them what really happened in that prison. And uh, we call it Ebrat Museum because Ebrat in Farsi or in Persian means learn or edification. And we just want to learn from the past to make a better future. And uh, I just show you the two of the main um, activities that uh, tortured the people and the prisoners for a long time. And they are now confessing in the court. And thanks for your patience and for consideration. I hope it just educate you more. Now also Maji from Pakistan also wants to share his country history with you. I'm Majid, I'm from Pakistan. And uh, today I'll be I like, you know, Park Joo Young and Kimio, they pre prepared really amazing presentation. And, you know, they talk everything in a lot of details. And my presentation is not that amazing. Uh, because I just prepared it in a very short time and I didn't know about, you know, saw the moon and I didn't know what the topic will be. So it's not going to be very long. It's not going to be very informational, but it definitely will, you know, uh, give some sort of insights about the, you know, uh, the atrocities that the people of Pakistan and India suffered during the British rule. Uh, and especially when the, both the countries, you know, they got separated. Uh, so, so are you guys, any, any, everyone can hear my voice, right? Yes. It's not like I'm the only one speaking. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna talk about like a war of independence uh, and then it was 1857. Then we're gonna talk about Independence Day when both the countries got separated and then how we, where are we right now and what lessons we have learned from the past and what les lessons do we need to learn? Um, first of all, that's one of the picture, you know, it, that's uh, when the, you know, partition was happening. Okay, uh, first of all, I guess it's very important to talk about, about the history. Uh, because right now I have friends from India also, and there are people from Pakistan mm -hmm. also. So, you know, like, uh, although they say like this, uh, Cicero once quoted, once said, like, you know, who there are two basic principles of uh, history. First of all is you dare not to say anything false. And then second is you refrain from anything uh, true, not to refrain from anything, uh, which, what is truth. So even though, you know, the history is, of course, truth, but Unfortunately, the history that I am being taught in Pakistan might not be the same in India. Um, mm -hmm. So like, you know, if you guys, if I end up, you know, hurting someone's feeling, I'm sorry, but I guess, yeah, that's what the history is about. We must remember it also. And uh, again, like Kimio was saying, we need to learn from the history and for a better future. And again, yeah, like about history, again, religious wars have always been the most brutal ones and cruel ones. Uh, and again, yeah, the Pakistan and India have 
been at war many times one of the main reason was religious and our separation was also on the basis of religion and because of that so many you know atrocities and brutal crimes happened during that time so let's talk about you know pakistan and india relationships and how it started uh so originally like you know pakistan and india they were together for a very long time from hundreds of years uh but then you know british uh, they came here in like 1500 and 1600 and uh, they started like uh with the basic rule like you know divide and conquer rule so of course the, uh, in that region in the subcontinent there were muslims and there were hindus also so british tried to you know uh impose his idea like you know hindus and muslims are you know not friends their enemies and then a lot of you know problems uh, created between both of these communities and they started you know uh, fighting off on and off and uh, that was their rule you know divide and conquer and then anyways so after that like you know two nation theory came up where the leaders from both these different communities they started saying like yeah we want a country for ourselves and the people from like hindu religion they were saying like yeah we want to have a country for ourselves both one of the the party that muslims uh, that was representing muslims was called muslim league and the party for uh, in, in hindus was congress and then later on and was, there was a long struggle a long history which i'll little bit talk about it and in 1947 it happened and then again after the separation there were still wars in 1965 1971 and even one in 1999 and we guys are just like south korea north korea our pakistan and india relationships are still almost like same even kind of worse also so uh, let's talk about 1957 war of independence so british were taking control of uh, you know of this subcontinent and they captured the last mughal emperor bahadur shah zafar uh, mughals were the one controlling subcontinent and when they captured him everyone you know india muslims and uh, uh, hindus at that time they were together and they started you know uh, trying to you know rivals again the british rule and at that time in 1857 throughout the some quarter and there were so many you know uh, these uh, uh, rebel re- uh, like rivals and protest again uh, you know english uh, emperors english rule and almost like 150000 indians were killed and like almost 100000 were just civilians they were not army personnel so it's a lot of killing that happened in during 1857 war because it was happening not in one city not like in jalla namdo it was like everywhere in subcontinent so many people were killed uh, british soldiers they committed lots of sexual uh, violence again you know indian women and uh, muslim leader so uh, unlike like sodemun i i tried to search but i couldn't find what if, if there was any prison maybe some one from india no but like what they used to say was like take all the famous le- leaders out of subcontinent and put them in other countries so they used to take them in uk or they used to put them in malta so so that like people should not people should not try to revolt and you know attack the prison or something like that so they just take the you know person out of the country so they took this very famous leader muslim leader and this put them um, in malta prison for 3 years uh and in that war almost 1400 citizens of just one village just one village were you know slaughtered alive and then again the you know the movement kept on happening pakistan muslims then you know after this war uh muslims and you know hindus they decided like we need to you know struggle hard we need to you know follow our own path muslims were like you know we want to have our own country hindus are like we want to have our own country and then because of this religious hate and because of this divide and conquer they were very you know against each other and then but eventually after the second world war in 1947 just like you know uh, the japan you know korea got independence subcontinent got independence also from uk uh, and india got separated and pakistan got separated pakistan was muslim majority india was hindu majority uh but and at that time you know because just like i was saying subcontinent was home of both the hindus and muslims and there were hindus living in pakistan and there was muslims living in india at that time because it was one country but at that time the uh, like migration happened and it is one of the biggest migration the world has ever seen so almost 12 to 15 million people migrated from one country to another so hindus are going from pakistan to uh, india and muslims are going from india to Pakistan so it was chaos and at that time more than like 1 to 2 million people were dead 
sorry. <laughs> okay. So almost one to two million people were dead at that time. Uh, and at that time, like, you know, forced conversations, like, you know, people try to force convert, like, you know, make you convert into Hindus or like into other religion. And there were mass abductions. People were burnt alive. Uh, the families, they were, they didn't want their daughters, you know, to be raped. So they used to burn them alive or kill them alive. Uh, there were more than 75,000 people were raped uh, in that and the figures are different and someone even say like more than 100,000 women and girls were raped at that time. And these are some of the, you know, uh, images, unfortunately, I have to see, show you guys. So people were, they were mass killing and mass, you know, uh, uh, like putting them in the graves and there were no food at all. People were dying at that time because of like, you know, this, all these hate crimes. Uh, there were whole villages that were burnt, uh, you know, like that. Uh, or only in Kashmir, like more than 50,000 Muslims were massacred. Uh, trains were, they were again burned alive and they were used to call like, you know, blood trains. Because if you see this picture, like they were everywhere was fire. A train coming from Pakistan to India was just like, you know, full of fire the same way other around. If a train was coming from India to Pakistan, everywhere there was blood and everything. So on the road tracks, train tracks, everywhere there were so many people were killed. But eventually, we got freedom. We both the countries sacrificed a lot. We had the freedom, but unfortunately, we still didn't learn a lot. Uh, there are some of the other pictures also of this uh, 1947 independence. Anyways, unfortunately, we didn't learn a lot. There were still wars in 1965, 1971, and 1999. I won't talk about the politics here because I am more. I I, I talk more about peace here. I, I'm not gonna say who win, who lost. But anyways, still Hindu Muslim conflicts are there on both sides of the countries. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the relationships of both the countries are not this, are still, you know, not that good. I cannot go to India and Indian cannot go to Pakistan, even though we have suffered a lot uh, through this history, even though British have, you know, did so many bad things, so killed so many Muslims, raped so many people, but still uh, with, there's long way to go to achieve peace. And if you guys want to know more about the history through pictures, you can click this uh, link that I can share later on. So yeah, that's all. I know it's not that detailed presentation like uh, Park Joo-young, but anyways, yeah, that's what it's all about. So there is one more part of our event is left. So now you will be divided into five groups and have a discussions on the given topics. You will have to 20 minutes, I think, uh, 15 minutes, 15 minutes to share your opinions. And after these 15 minutes, while you will choose one representative of your group who will have to make one minute presentation and tell us uh, what have you talked about and what is your group common opinion on the given topic. The topic is, once Winston Churchill said, the nation that forgets its past has no future. So it means that uh, for a better future, we have to remember the past. And today we have learned about their freedom, <clears throat> about their like Sodom prison and about some freedom activists <clears throat> in different countries. So the question is, do you think the meaning of freedom in the past is different from the modern meaning of the freedom? <clears throat> So uh, freedom in the past is same or not with the freedom in the future? And do we have the freedom movements nowadays? Uh, so from what we discussed, uh, we came to the conclusion that the difference uh, between uh, the past freedom and the present freedom, like we came to three important points. Uh, the first important uh, factor was that before uh, the freedom which we used to fight was on the field, like going to war uh, between like countries and uh, just, you know, a lot of people used to die because of those. Uh, but the present uh, freedom, like we are still struggling with freedom, of course, everyone knows. So uh, like the present freedom is mostly like we don't go on the field but rather we use the social media platform as a mean to, you know, uh, connect with people. Like nowadays, the most famous trend of uh, doing this is the hashtag system where people just hashtag and just spread the news everywhere. 
The second important factor, uh, the difference between past and present is that past, uh, being a whistleblower for the freedom used to be very difficult. So like, you know, it used to be like risking your own life for being a whistleblower. And not everyone used to dare to become a whistleblower. But nowadays, it's because of the social media platform that it spreads like a fire. So if one person becomes a whistleblower, kind of like everyone can participate in becoming the whistleblower. So it has become more, you know, kind of like uh, you, 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 you don't, you, still you have to be scared of your life when you become a whistleblower, but still, you know, it's kind of like before becoming a whistleblower, it used to be very difficult to, uh, spread the news like what for what we are fighting for but nowadays it's kind of like one person spreads it and it just uh, spreads like a fire in the whole world and the last part the thing that nowadays fighting for the freedom is more huge than before past because past we used to mostly fight for you know between countries and kind of uh, like it used to be just wars and all those things but nowadays we fight every day for freedom of speech like for everything so it's kind of like we fight for the work environment we fight for our university we fight uh, from within like before it was uh, outside but nowadays we fight from within like you know the politicians we fight for you know corrupt politicians and everything. So all these things are the big differences that we can notice between the past freedom and the present freedom, the way, the method of you know getting into the freedom. First of all, we talked about the difference of meaning of freedom of the past and the meaning of freedom of now. Um, we thought that in the past, people wanted to secure their freedom by a freedom of their society, like a group of the same religion or thinking and politic ideals. But and now, currently, we, we want to secure our freedom of our own freedom. Like, it is more focused on individual. I mean, we want to freedom. We want to secure our freedom of our hobby, our job, our sexuality, or so. And secondly, uh, in the past, we fought against government directly, as we learned before. An 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 Jungkun Yoon Bong Il drew their bombs directly to find again, fight against government. But currently in now, currently in the present, we don't, we don't throw any bombs anymore. We fight against the government indirectly and non-violently by using our SNS or patent, using writing patent or so. So, and lastly, we talked about NGO and UNs trying and, yes, NGOs trying of securing our freedom of secure safety, food, freedom of education, immigrants by, by like, for example, by <clears throat> taking refugees. So that's all we talked about. Thank you, number one and two. Uh, it was nice. Uh, so what we talked about was, uh, yeah, like freedom before was more uh, related and focused on basic needs and basic concepts, such as maybe struggling for finding food or trying to, I mean, try to get freedom on land uh, or more of like physical uh, meanings and physical concepts. But as time passed, we uh, try to focus because we just passed and overcome those type of uh, problems and those type of struggling. So, so we tried more to focus on uh, more spiritual and uh, more uh, the concepts of freedom uh, to, to find like more meanings in our life. So uh, uh, there, there has been like a lot of movements uh, during the time. 
so before, again, to talk about another difference was before when we talked about freedom and then the movements also for freedom, it was more restricted in the borders of uh, a country or an area. But as time passed, and also with the power of media, we do have this opportunity and this power to uh, make it like out of the borders. And this uh, not only helps uh, the movements uh, and the people who are trying for freedom of any specific area uh, to like speak out and give, the, give their, um, I mean, message to the world and get help from them, but also give the motivation to the other people in the world to Uh, movements for freedom that they want and we we did have a lot of improvement during the time for the freedom freedom of speech freedom of uh, thought and freedom of um, just behavior and whatever we could talk about of course we still have uh, lots of uh, like way to go but um, I mean the movements that LGBTQ had uh, we did have uh, Black Lives Matter, which was a big movement. And we do have different movements in different countries, such as Tibet in China, and then in Kashmir and in Palestine, that people are uh, trying for years and decades to get their freedom in different um, era. So um, yeah, this is uh, the point is uh, the, the meaning of freedom has changed a lot from the past to the to recent and of course we would have the different meaning in the future but the point is like uh when we look in the past and at the moment uh we did improve and definitely we would get uh more opportunities in the future as uh, our media is improving as we are getting one and our as our needs and priorities are getting more similar and similar to the world so hopefully everything get better and better. So what we talked about was actually, uh, first of all, we all agree that we can learn something from the past to make better future, like we said before. And we talked about that definition of the freedom is getting expanded. I mean, because in the past priority was, you know, like security and, you know, save our lives. That was the priority in the past. But nowadays, like, the definition of the freedom became much more personal. I mean, like a freedom to express that kind of thing. So because of the situation is changing from the past, so the definition of the freedom is expanding and became much personal. And we all also talked about difference between past freedom movement and the freedom movement nowadays. And the big difference was social media actually become we can use social media, a lot of social media, like Instagram, Twitter, things, and we can make a lot of hashtag to, to let people know what's happening in my country. So, so people who live other country can still know that what's happening to other countries, in other countries. So people can raise their issue very widely. But one of, peop one of people in our group showed his concern that there is, there is huge possibility that social media can be misused, like a fake fake news to disturb the freedom movement. So we have to be careful about that, unlike the past. So yeah, that's what we talked about. Yeah. Our group thought that there is definite difference between the freedom movement of the past and be between the freedom movement of today's modern society. First, there is difference about what people fighting for. In the past, people mostly fought, fought for independence from other countries, but nowadays we we do we fight for we struggle to find basic self rights, such as freedom to speech, and we don't have to fight for in independent. Uh, there are sometimes independence movements from other countries. But most of the time, we there's struggle for finding basic rights. And second is method of gaining freedom. In the past, we seek freedom through. Uh, in the nowadays, we seek freedom through nonviolence and conversation. And but in the past, people have to fight for their deaths 
and they were willing to die from their countries. And also media was not much developed in the past days, so authoritative leaders could do whatever they want. And, but in the, but in also in the past, people have to gain freedom through their physical fights. So one people, one person also said that unlike in the past, our generation is much more privileged because we can live more freedom in live, live in freedom. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for sharing your opinions and <clears throat> telling us what is freedom. So like the most com common opinion is that we still have to struggle for the freedom, but freedom struggling for the freedom in the past and in the modern time is luckily it's different so now we are struggling not for for freedom from the other countries but for like another freedom so we have freedom of our rights so it mm -hmm. was re was really interesting to to know your opinions so it's already six o'clock and it's time to finish but first i really want to thank you uh, wants to say you thank you for you for you, uh, you <clears throat> mm. because you had uh, find the time to join us today and I really enjoyed my time with you so I learned a lot about the history about Korean history Iran history and history of Pakistan and I really enjoy enjoyed my time I hope you also